Yo. Where's that shadow coming from? What's going on, good people? Let's get ready to get this thing done. You dig? Let me go over to my page and get a share. Good morning, good morning. You guys let me know what city you're tuning in from. And also, uh, you know how we do, man. It's all about collaboration, man. Let me know uh, the name of the brand that you're building. No links, but name of the brand. Little description about what it is you got going on, man. Grand Rising. It's all about collaboration. Appreciate that, uh, uh, Karen. Uh, let me just share this over to my page. You guys go ahead and hit the share, share button for me as well. Good morning, Double A. How are you? Uh, it's that time of the year, man. Johnstown, PA. Oh, what you what you know about them Eagles, man? Them, you flying high over there in PA? That time. So let me just post that real quick. Hit the share button for me. Uh, and we're going to go ahead and queue YouTube up. Melanie, what's going on? Cameron said, yes, flying high. Super Bowl champion, Philadelphia Eagles. Uh, representing in the building. All right, so. All right, I'm not going to use that, I don't think. I'm just going to communicate with you guys from the cell phone. You guys see me all right? It seems like I got a dark shadow on my camera for some reason, but nonetheless, let's cue up the intro music. Tiasha, good morning. Good morning. I see you doing big things, uh, Tiasha. Uh, yes, Boutique Enterprise in the building. Kirk Wheeler. All right. Appreciate that, Kirk. Thank you. All right. Can see me fine. All right. Cool. All right. Let's go ahead and start the broadcast this morning. Black world and welcome to Talking Money in the Morning Live with your main man H. Cortez, the one and only financial health mentor to the black community, everybody's favorite fatherpreneur, where I do my absolute best to bring practical yet proven wealth building strategies to working men and women all over this great nation of ours. It is truly an honor, privilege, and a blessing to come to you live and direct from the Generational Wealth Building Conference Studios here in St. Louis, Missouri. And if you are not familiar with the Generational Wealth Building Conference. Let me just read some stuff to you, man. Uh, this is put on by my good friend, uh, Evan Jefferson. It's going down in Atlanta, GA, uh, April uh, 6th through the 8th. So Friday night, they're going to do the money mixes for adults only. It says we party with a purpose and give adults the opportunity to acquire, uh, get acquainted with some uh, mental dialogue, poetry, and spoken word. Saturday, there's going to be a youth Wealth Workshop 
uh, for children's five and up. We will teach real estate. We will teach international marketing, live entertainment, uh, performance by uh, Kante or Kante the Hero. Uh, light refreshment serves Saturday. Uh, the afternoon session is going to be the Millionaire Mindset Sisterhood from Poverty to Prosperity. Uh, and that's going to feature a Dr. Roberta Hosky. Uh, and that's, uh, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Yep, Roberta Hosky. And that's going to be uh, from 8 to 11. Uh, and then there's Saturday, there's going to be Money Moves, uh, the late night uh, session. Uh, Chicago Steppers will be in the building from 9 p.m. to 2 a.m. Eastern. Sunday, the Billionaires Brunch. Listen, man, my man is doing his thing. I need y'all to support him. Uh, I will have the, the link to the site up. Uh, if not today, then definitely by tomorrow. But go over to Eventbrite and check out some of the tickets, man. It's four different venues, three days, April 6th through the 8th. You can buy a ticket that covers the entire venue or the entire event, or you can just pick the events that you want to attend. Uh, but that is uh, the Black Billionaires Club, my man uh, Evan Jefferson and his team. Uh, I already know the type of... Um, uh, 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 things that he's got in store, and 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 we we know Evans' track record, man. So he's putting together a nice conference. It's going to teach generational wealth building uh, to our community, and we absolutely need it. So uh, go to Eventbrite and just search uh, the generational wealth building conference uh, and see what the ticket prices are like. I will have uh, a lot of this stuff streamlined uh, because I'm going to continue to promote it and plug it for my brother so that he can get. Um, so we can get the word out because I don't know if you guys know that Facebook uh, kicked him off of uh, Facebook for for I'm sure some strange or, or uh, unwarranted reason. But that's another reason we got to build our own platform. So do me a favor, share this stream. But also when you go to the Generational Wealth Building Conference uh, uh, Eventbrite, share that as well, guys. Share the 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 Eventbrite. Uh, because we got to get the word out because you guys know if, if Evan was on Facebook, he'd be live about it all day, every day. So uh, we got to pick up the slack from for our brother. So uh, the Generational Wealth Building Conference, again, April 6th through the 8th. Do me a huge favor. If you're checking this out on YouTube, go ahead and hit the subscribe button uh, if you have not already subscribed to the channel. Uh, and I want you guys to uh, participate with going to the event, right? Even if you don't want to grab a ticket, right? I get it. Uh, you might not even be in Atlanta, but still um, go to the event right and uh, share the stream for us. Uh, you can at least do that. And that's how you can uh, help us uh, in that regard as well. Uh, and for, the, for those of you guys who are checking this out on Facebook, go ahead and hit, hit the share button. If you have not already shared the stream uh, for today, please do so. Uh, and uh, if you have not already liked the fan page, Financial Health Mentor, you want to hit like and turn on your notifications, man, because... We're going to be going in uh, all year long, man. And you don't want to miss uh, what we got going on. Today, we're going to be talking about uh, that tax refund that everybody is anticipating, man. Don't blow it, man. Do something your future self will thank you for. Today's show is also brought to you by the Black Wealth Movement. And you guys know that we teach you how to build generational wealth the same way. Some of the things you're going to be learning in the Generational Wealth Building Conference uh, you could be learning ahead of time if you decide to join the Black Wealth Movement. $35 to start, uh, roughly $30, uh, $50 a month to run your business. What it is, is you get your own business in the financial education space to motivate and encourage you to get your own money right. But then you can also make money once you learn our strategies and perfect them. Then you can start teaching other people our strategies and start getting paid some passive and residual income. And we all need passive and residual income in our lives. So you definitely want to uh, figure out how you can do that. But we teach you how to minimize your taxes, eliminate your debt, fix your own credit, how investments work. So you can start investing to build multi-generational wealth. All you got to do is text Black Wealth Movement to 314-874-6887. If you want more information on that, again, text Black Wealth Movement to 314-874-6887 or go to moreinfo.joincortezenow.com. You guys know how we do, man. Each and every morning, I like to let you know exactly who the show is for, just in case we got some newcomers on. This show is for risers and grinders only, man. You got to be ready to get up, get out, and get something in today's economy. And if that's you, 
This is your show, my friend. This show is for legacy builders, man. How about building a legacy for your children? I'm talking about uh, doing something today that they will be proud of. I'm talking about doing something today that will ensure your great-grandchildren will inherit seven figures, right? That's what we're talking about. Those are the things we like to talk about on this show. And we give you some practical steps and strategies and tips on how to do that. So if you haven't done so already, go ahead and hit the share button. Just check us out on YouTube. Also, make sure that you comment in the chat where you're from and the name of the brand that you're building. And do the same thing uh, on Facebook. Let us know the name of the brand that you're building. Yes, ERGJ Enterprises to catch Evan Jefferson uh, on Facebook. But his personal profile page uh, was shut down. Even the new page that he created trying to avoid this mess they shut that one down too. So uh, do us that that favor, man, um, and and keep it locked uh, so that you can stay uh, abreast to what's going on. Uh, the show is not for pessimistic people. It's not for people who got a problem with money. Uh, so if that's you, we have to politely ask you to exit stream left, right? Uh, we have very low tolerance for negativity. And like I tell you each and every morning, if you've never seen a future billionaire before, then I want you to take a screenshot. Jeez, and watch your boy work because it's about to go down. So, you guys know what time it is, man. It is that time of year where uh, tax refunds uh, and tax refund advance checks are out and about, uh, and people are starting to uh, get money where they're going to ball for a couple weeks, uh, and then reality is going to set in. So, um, I know the people who listen to this show and, and follow me closely or you guys are more of the type that are saying, you know what, I've been there, I've done that, I don't want to keep doing that over and over again. I would rather, um, I would much rather do something smart with my tax refund this year. So uh, that's what I, I thought I, I'd bring to you this morning. Uh, five things that you probably shouldn't do with your tax refund <laughs> uh, and then 10 things that you can do with it that will make your future self proud. Do me a favor, if you haven't already, comment where you're from, and then also uh, the name of the business or brand that you're building. Let me see. Who do we have in the building today? I know we have 13 Entertainment is in the house. Uh, we have Boutique House Enterprises uh, checking in, and uh, Kurt Wheeler from the Financial War Room is in the building. Let's see, who else do we have? Uh, Ross Management Group in the house. I am working at Cortez. I owe a lot to you. Well, thank you, uh, Tiasha. I appreciate that unsolicited uh, testimony there. Uh, I just want to help everybody win. It says, I am series, uh, author of children's book that is Karen, uh, Karen uh, Gandhi. Uh, Robert Plant is in the building. Plant of Future Gains Financial Education Group is in the building. All righty, and uh, Grand Risings, uh, uh, Beats by Du Bois, uh, Productions, Ohio is in the building. All right, uh, Columbus, Atlanta, Georgia. You know I'll be in Atlanta next week, Tiasha, or, or this weekend coming up, as a matter of fact. So you got to come hang out with me and the rest of your Black Wealth Movement team members. I haven't figured out exactly what we're going to do. Likely going to have some sort of uh, dinner slash training Saturday night uh, and, and hang out. I'm at the Crown Plaza uh, on Virginia Avenue and I don't know if I want to do something there or what the case is going to be. But uh, definitely if you're in the Atlanta area, this Saturday is going down. I'll be there from Friday probably till Monday. Uh, so uh, prepare to uh, come hang out with your boy, man, and let's get some stuff crack a lacking. All right, so what are some things that you commonly know that people are going to do with their tax refund. Come on, man. You guys know how I like to make the show interactive. What are some things that you've seen our brothers and sisters doing with their tax refund? I'm going to see if it makes the list on the five things that they shouldn't do, right? Uh, yes, we'll need to meet up with you. Absolutely. Absolutely. Let us let us know. Uh, evenings, though, because I'll be in conferences all morning. Uh, so Saturday and Sunday, I'll be in conferences from uh, 9 until... Uh, about four, uh, but those the evenings is when we definitely want to catch up. Uh, <laughs> so let's see if this, some of this stuff makes a list. Uh, William says, uh, buy cars. Uh, we know that they're going to do that, man. Uh, Tiasha says, get some good hair. Man, Tiasha. 
I didn't know that 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 people would buy hair that cost a thousand dollars, fifteen hundred dollars. It ah, that's crazy. It, you know what? I, when I knew that was serious, when 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 finance companies start getting behind the hair game, where you can go finance your weave, I said, man, that is crazy, man. That is some crazy, crazy stuff. So uh, let's see. Tiasha said, uh, William says people buy cars. Tiasha said people go get some good hair, uh, buy shoes. Uh, buying new Jordans for the whole family. Yes, yes. Uh, going to Disney uh, every year around this time. Yes, I, I got it. Uh, uh, Park Ball Mentoring is in the building. Revolutionizing the mind of the young athletes. Yep. Down payment on cars. Yes, yes. New wardrobe is what. All right, so I got I got 10 things or five things that you probably don't want to do this year. If you if they name of the game, right, we've all matured. And, and this is the no judgment zone, right? Because when we were young and got those first tax refund checks, uh, we did some some of that silly stuff, too. Right. I ain't going to lie. I ain't going to stop. I ain't going to front. We've all been there. Uh, but now that we've matured and now that we understand how money works and that money could work for us and 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 really take us to a, another level harder and faster than we can work for ourselves, we want to do the right thing with the tax refund this year. And then we're gonna talk about remind me before we get off, we're gonna talk about debt, man, because this is this is this is one thing that you might want to rethink as well. Do you pay off a bunch of debt? Or do you do something with that money that's going to bring back more money to allow you to pay off the debt, right? Since we all did these things uh, once or twice in the past, yep. Uh, uh, they boss up Cortez uh, from Slum, uh, scrub to boss business owner for about two months. Yeah, T.I. shit. Now we're talking. Now we're talking. All right, so... Uh, you guys all, all said this one. Uh, and just for you guys to know, I, I want this is from a blog called The Simple Dollar. Uh, I, I, these are some of the things I always give you guys my sources uh, because I don't know it all, but I'm always studying. And just like I tell you, these, these this show is me lecturing to myself out loud and you guys just get to witness, right? This is me trying to train and educate myself so I can take my family to the next level uh, I just do it out loud so you guys can hear it as well. So I, this is a blog that I like to uh, check out called The Simple Dollar. Um, and today's, uh, or the article, uh, this is actually from uh, uh, September of uh, a couple years back, but it's still right on point today. It says, tax refund, 10 things to do and five things not to do. We're going to start with the five things not to do, right? Uh, and you guys all said this, number one. Uh, buy lots of little frivolous things. So it's quite often uh, after getting a refund, my parents will take the entire family out to dinner a few times. Once a year, they uh, one year they bought a Nintendo, another year they bought a giant TV that they did not need. Right? Uh, they 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 buy a TV that they did not. So these are things that people are doing with their tax refund, man. And I tell you, each and every as often as I can possibly possibly recall it is we have to see our money like the seed and not the harvest, right? We have to see our money like the seed and not the harvest. And what we do is when we get this big refund, because we overpaid our taxes all year long, now they've given some of that money back to us. We see it like the harvest. We see this like, like finally I get a reward for all of my hard work all year long, right? Uh, says good morning from Miami, uh, licensed realtor in the building, uh, Angelic Williams Jackson. Uh, good morning and welcome to the show this morning. So we, we see this as the fruit of a year's worth of hard labor, right? And because we see it as the harvest, then we let too much of it get away from us, right? We let too much of our money get away from us, you know, uh, I, I, I liken this to biblical times and, and old time farming communities. They would have a harvest festival every year when they bring in the harvest. Well, when they bring in that harvest, because the food is plentiful, a lot of waste takes place. 
Because the harvest is plentiful, a lot of waste takes place. Another example you can use is a smorgasbord. We've all been to the all-you-can-eat buffets, right? And if we, if this was not an all-you-can-eat buffet and you went and got a plate of chicken from just a regular chicken restaurant, you'd be cleaning the bone, including the gristle, right? Let's be all the way 100, man. You would be cleaning the bone, including the gristle. But when you go to an all-you-can-eat buffet, you pile a bunch of chicken on your plate and you take one or two bites on that chicken, and then you push that plate to the side and you go back up to the buffet table and get something else. That's the same thing that happens with our money during tax time. We get an abundance of it at one time and we'll go and buy all the stuff at the checkout counter on our way out of Walmart, for instance. Knowing good and well, if this was not tax season, you'd be smacking your kids' hands. Put that gun down. No, we ain't getting no soda. No, we ain't getting no candy bar. But because we have, we're have, we thinking harvest and not seed with our money, oh, yeah, give me a pack of that gum, too. Give me a soda, too. Yeah, give me some chips, too. See, we got to start seeing our money as the seed and not the harvest. So you're going to, people are going to buy a lot of frivolous things when it comes to their tax refund, right? Number two, get a new car, right? You guys said this one, get a new car. Income tax returns meant uh, automobile upgrades even if the old one was still running fine. And here's what we tend to do. We don't just start thinking about the new car in February. We start preparing ourselves in October, in January, uh, in, in uh, July, in August, because when the car needs an oil change, for instance, thank you for sharing the show, Jennifer. Uh, also, if you guys have not already shared the stream, go ahead and hit the share button. You guys know that is your price of admission for this free content uh, is to hit the share share button. Uh, uh, but you, you know, the new car, you you start preparing yourself in August, September, October to get a new car with your income tax, right? The new, the, the old car just needs an oil change and the oil light pops on and you say, man, see, I, I need this new car because this, 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 little, little, this, I'm not going to keep driving this raggedy thing, right? Appreciate it, Angelic, right? Uh, uh, it's, it's the, the AC in the car just needs a $60 charging of Freon but you're ready to throw the whole car in the gutter because you're anticipating a big refund coming. There's nothing wrong with the car. You just start planting these seeds in your own head to justify buying a new car with your tax refund. Right? You start programming yourself that this car no longer cuts it. So you can put a down payment on a new one when you get that tax refund. We got to stop doing that, man. What's going on, personal economy coaches in the building? We've got to stop doing that, y'all. Uh, we just we just make all these rationalizations. And then once all of the tax refund money is gone, what do we say? Man, I should have kept my old bucket. <laughs> I should have kept the old bucket. Oh, what? There wasn't nothing really wrong with old Bessie, right? In fact, we hand it down to somebody in the family or we sell it for pennies on a dollar and our new car then broke down and all and they spent five hundred dollars to get the AC charged up, get it tuned up, get an oil change, put some new tires on that bad boy, and they rocking. But we done went and bought a lemon because we convinced ourselves that our current vehicle was <laughs> let's, let's, Come on, man. And then now, even if, 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 if even it's not a lemon, we're struggling to make the payments. We're struggling to make the insurance payments. And we're like, man, I should have kept my bucket. All I needed was liability. And I'd be straight right about now. I could have taken some of my tax refund money, put some new tires on the bucket, got the AC charged up, uh, 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 got the oil changed, tuned that puppy up, and I could have kept rolling. 
Got to stop doing that, man. Yeah, it says in the building and holding on tight to my car title. You know what I'm saying, <laughs> Robert? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> right? Uh, another thing that we do that we might not want to do is we put the money into a checking account for safekeeping. Right? So we say, okay, I don't have a plan with the money. I don't want to spend it on frivolous things, so I'm just gonna put it in a bank account for right now. And how many of you guys know that if you put it somewhere that you can actually touch it regularly and consistently, like attaching it to a debit card, right? I've got this problem with my son right now, trying to coach him and train him and educate him on all things financial, man, and he's struggling to catch the concepts. But dude will swipe his debit card for a 50 cent pack of gum. Right. And I'm like, dude, you, you can't. <laughs> that ain't how it works. So we will put our money and say, hey, I don't have a plan for it. I know I don't want to spend it. I don't want to splurge it. You're trying to do the right thing. So you're saying, let me put it in the bank account. But you're putting it in a bank account where it's attached to a debit card. And every day you go out, get yourself some lunch. Not only you take your lunch to work, but oh, I'm just going to treat myself to lunch this week. So every week you go and swipe that card, right? Go into the gas station. Normally, you pay at the pump, right? But now, because you got the, the, the money attached to the safe card, instead of paying at the pump, you go into the gas station, right? Into the quick trip, into the mobile, or into the Sinclair, whatever you got, right? And not only do you get the gas, but you get an arm full of stuff, right? You know, when we, when we go into a place, a convenience store, and we say, I'm not going to spend all, buy all this stuff, so I don't need a basket. But you put a bunch of, you got a bunch of stuff in your arms. You got your big goat. You got your uh, three, four bags of snacks, uh, uh, chips. You got your candy. Uh, uh, you got your sunflower seeds. And now give me 40 on whatever, right? Now you just spent $80 in the gas. Normally you pay at the pump and all you get is gas. But now all of a sudden, because you made that big deposit into your checking account, and that, that even though you don't have a plan to spend the money frivolously, what are you doing? You're spending the money frivolously anyway. So instead of paying at the pump, you go in. And now you want to fill up, but you also get an arm full of junk food, right? If you're going to put your money away, put it somewhere in a bank that you cannot get to as conveniently or put it into a, a an account that is not attached to a checking or say or a checking or a debit card so you don't have access to it until you can develop a plan for your money. Number 4. Now, uh, the 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 author of this is is a is a white guy, right? And and he's he's right on most of this, but he says number 4 is you loan it to family members, right? Now, we don't have a problem with the loaning it to family members. What we do tend to have a problem with is that whole boyfriend, girlfriend dynamic uh, in the black community, right? It's kind of like, like, like they say, cuffing season. When, when it gets cold outside, uh, brothers and sisters want to start cuffing and, 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 and hugging on to one another because... Uh, they want somebody to come home to. It gets dark early, so nobody wants to be out and be alone, right? Same thing happens, man. Tax season. Your boo get extra lubby-dubby, right? <laughs> Your boo gets extra lubby-dubby. So we don't loan the money to family members, but... Your boo been planting seeds, just like you've been planting seeds in your mind about getting this new car since February. I mean, since 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 September, since October, since since November. Well, guess what? Your boo has been planting seeds in your head since for the same amount of time. You know what, man? It's it's you know the, that old man cave, man. Uh, I can't wait to get it right. <laughs> Right? They've been planting seeds all year long. Man, I can't can't wait to get the man cave right. Then I won't have to bother you. You can watch your soaps in peace. I could be, you know, in, in the other room in the man cave and we don't have to disturb one another. Right? Man, these these I've been rocking these J's for a little while. They all busted up. 
on me, but you know, I'm gonna keep on rocking them though, because I know we're trying to get our money right. Man, it's been a while since I had my beard shaved and my hair cut and stuff, but you know, I'm gonna keep cutting it myself. I ain't no need to go to the barbers. They start planting seeds so that when you uh, uh, get that fat check, right? <laughs> when you get that fat check, now all of a sudden it's like, shoot, my boo need this, my bae need this. Oh man, I I wouldn't mind having a nice watch, you know, this little plastic piece, man. That that Telly and Twine, you know, we've been saying we're gonna uh, start shopping black on anyway. Telly and Twine is a black on watch company, right? But all they watches start at three hundred dollars, right? You, see, you start doing little silly stuff like that, right? Uh, Body Baba Zell says my boo better use his own tax refund, <laughs> right? Yeah, don't rub the head while planting seeds. If, if, if yeah, yeah, you know it's just um, you know I I this 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 watch right here, man. You know it's cool, but it kind of don't go with everything, man. I wish I had one that kind of went with everything you did, right? Cut that, man. Stop that, man. I'm telling you, if you don't have a plan for your money, somebody else will, right? And the last thing, uh, number five is have a giant party. Have a giant party, man. Uh, and we just experienced that some, some somebody got a tax refund advance check and spent half of it on a Super Bowl party. It, it kicked it with a bunch of people they don't like and even some people they don't even know. Are y'all following me? Somebody, listen to what I'm saying. Somebody... Got a tax refund advance check. Couldn't even wait to get the whole refund. Went to rent center Rented the biggest TV they could find. For a couple hundred dollars. Then they bought all the liquor and all the, 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 the food uh, that they can fit into their small place. And they invited a bunch of people over that they don't even like. To kick it with. And then those people invited some people that the the host don't even know. And now you got a house full of people you don't know and strangers eating up all your food, drinking up all your drink, spilling stuff on your carpet. We do some, come on y'all. Right? Come on, you got everybody on this stream know somebody who did that. Don't say their name. Don't put their name in the chat. But everybody in the stream know somebody that did that. Yeah. Yeah, Giovanni, they went to Renter Center, National Renter Own, and rented some TVs for a weekend. And, and here's what Renter Center does. Because they know this is what people do, they will... Uh, of course, inflate the prices and make them pay some sort of non-refundable deposit or something like that. Or make them put down a huge deposit and find a reason not to give it back to them. Oh, it's scratched up right here, so we're going to have to get, take half of that deposit. Right? <laughs> Appreciate that, Tiasha. Don't buy uh, frivolous things. Don't get a new car. Don't put your money in a bank for safekeeping with a debit card attached. Don't loan it to your family members. Slash uh, treat your boo. Uh, <laughs> uh, and don't go having big parties, man. You ain't got to. Don't go taking the family out to eat. Listen, man. I remember what we used to do. And this was because we just didn't. <clears throat> we didn't have it. So when my wife and I first got together, she was staying with her mom. I was staying with my mom. So we get the tax refund. Uh, and then we would go in uh, because we, we were staying with our parents. We wanted to feel like we had our own. So instead of taking the money and saving it for a down payment to get our own or paying first and last month's rent at somebody's uh, 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 apartment so we can get our own place, we would take the money and go rent a hotel room for a week or so. And we would pretend we had our own place. Crazy, man. Crazy. Right? We could have easily given somebody first and last month's rent and got into our own place and start doing our grown-up thing. But instead, we spent $1,000 on renting a nice hotel room for a week. 
And I remember my sons jumping on the beds and stuff because they finally got some freedom. They ain't got to share a bed. And all. It, but that's what happens when you don't have a financial education. Right? That's what happens when you don't have a financial education. Right? And that's why we try to do uh, this show and, and, and keep it all the way 100, man. Keep things moving, man. Right? Good morning, Black Wealth Movement fam. What's up, Nate? So that's kind of how things work, man. And, and so now let's get into the 10 things uh, that you could do that can help. Uh, man, time is flying this morning. Number one, start or supplement an emergency fund. Start a supplement. Uh, D-Boy says some people are doing that right now. Yep. Getting out of their mama's basement for a weekend, for a week, for a couple weeks. And 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 they're going to go to Lumiere. They're going to go to the Four Seasons. They ain't just going to go in to you know, any old spot. They're going to go to somewhere super nice. Right. <laughs> right. Listen, man, I, I keep telling y'all, man, I, I ain't telling you what I heard. I'm telling you what I know, man. And that's why I work so diligently to really get myself all the way together because I know we could be doing some great things together if we had people to set a better example for us. And that's my goal. And I appreciate you guys coming along for the ride. So number one, start or supplement an emergency fund. If you don't already have uh, an emergency fund, good time to start one is take a percentage of that tax refund money and say, you know what? Let me go and put this money somewhere I can't touch it but somewhere that I have access to it uh, if I need it uh, in a pinch, right? I, I will tell you this. Uh, I can't give you advice on where to park your money. Uh, right, Capone suits and all. <laughs> uh, they scared to start adulting. Yeah, I can't tell you where to put your money, but uh, look into and do some research on municipal bond funds. A municipal bond fund is how cities grow. This is how cities borrow money from municipal bond funds. So whatever city you're in, when you, you hear them talking about floating, floating bonds, putting bonds on uh, the ballot, that means that city is looking to get the people's permission to borrow money. And the reason it's different than a, a regular savings account because they usually have anywhere from four to 6% return Versus a savings account will give you less than 1%. So if you go that route and never have an emergency, guess what? That money is growing at a much more rapid pace than if you just put it in a regular savings account, put it in a CD at 2%, right? So do your research though. Uh, check into something like that. Uh, so you, you don't just want your emergency fund sitting somewhere that you can access it. You also want it to be growing faster than the pace of inflation and with ease of access and with ease of access and municipal bond funds uh, could fill that void uh, for you. So create or start emergency fund or if the emergency fund is already kind of growing, uh, we, we, we talk about having a mini emergency fund at three dollars, three thousand. But then your full emergency fund is at least six months of whatever it costs you to live right now. If it costs you $5,000 to live right now, you need $5,000 times six, right? Eventually, you need to get that emergency fund to $30,000, right? So that's kind of, uh, 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 yeah, you know, we, we try to give it all the way to the people. Uh, and, and and people are always accusing me of Giovanni. Giovanni uh, you, you just want... Somebody to join your Black Wealth Movement group, and then we got to pay for the information. I get a game out for free all day, every day, and twice on Sundays, right? So I have no problem with that. But yes, I do want you to join the Black Wealth Movement because we need to be working together collectively to build wealth long term uh, in a unified way. So yes, I want you to join the movement, but that don't stop me from giving you the game, right? So start an emergency fund. Uh, if you don't have a, a whole emergency fund, do a mini emergency fund. Uh, and we talked about this. Number two, uh, invest it in a mutual fund, right? I want to I want to show you guys something. Well, I'm not going to show you, but I'm going to tell you because uh, I'm not going to do a screen share. Uh, actually, I could do a screen share. No, I, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do the screen share. However, what I want to share with you guys, and and this is powerful. Because, li listen at this. 
Listen, listen at this. $2,500 invested one time. So we know people who are going to get uh, 65, 75, 8,500 in tax refunds, right? They overpaid all year and they got kids, so earn income credits and all this stuff is going to factor into the play. So 8,500. If they put just $2,500 into a mutual fund and at 14% rate of return and left it sit there for the next 40 years, it grows to $654,502.85. I don't know if y'all heard that. You say, Cortez, well, why 40 years? Because if you got kids and, and your, 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 your young, say, say your oldest baby is five years old and you got a three-year-old and you got a newborn. So this year, you do it for the five-year-old. 2,500, 14% rate of return, 40 years. That means when that kid is 45 years old, that kid is going to be worth $654,502.85. Now, this is provided that you put you don't put a single uh, another single dime in this investment. Hey, I got 8500, I'm going to put something away for my oldest right now. This ain't college money. This is when you get 40 years old and, and maybe you're ready to strike out on your own, get your first house and buy your first house. You can pay for that thing cash. Right. This is what I'm going to do for my child. I'm going to put them in a position that in 40 years down the road, they're going to be set. You do this one time. This year you do it for your oldest child. Next year you do it for the second oldest child. The year after that, you do it for the baby. Now, when your children all get around 40, 45 years old, they got 654000 Now, this is just a one-time investment at 14% rate of return. Now, I know you're saying, Cortez, well, I'm getting 14% rate of return. Uh, join the Black Wealth Movement, I'll tell you, right? <laughs> but I want you to know that this is, this is possible for... If, if you're thinking about what you could be doing with your tax refund, right? And that ain't even saying put the whole 8,500 in there. Peel off 2,500 out of the 85, out of the 65, out of the 45, and do something your future self is going to thank you for, right? So number three, start an IRA or supplement an IRA. If you already got one, put more money into it. it says, where am I depositing the money? So you... And this is one thing, and I'll tell you this. Go do your research at investment banks. Go research investment banks. Fidelity, T. Rowe Price, Vanguard, Charles Schwab. These are the banks that your local bank is investing your money with. Oh, I'm going to run that one back. These are the banks that your local bank is investing your money with. Let me let me let me hip y'all to a little tea on, on the banking situation. Right? Do you guys know that every night that your local bank closes, that money is transferred to banks overseas where the banks are just opening so that they can use your money to make money? Every night when your bank closed, they are going to transfer that money to the markets where the banks are open so those banks can make money on your money. And then when those banks close, the money is transferred back to your bank so your bank can keep making money on your money. Well, you got to understand how to check into the investment banks. Right. Because you can go to those banks yourself if you understood what to look for. Go to Morningstar. They rate the funds. Right. So uh, all of these companies, man, their reputation is hinged on growing people's money. 
And people are, are, are would want to, people rather do the investing themselves. I'm not saying don't learn how to do the investing yourself. I'm just saying if I had the opportunity to shoot a single free throw for a hundred million dollars, I would probably give Steph Curry 10 million to shoot that one free throw for me than shoot it myself. Even though I'm a career 75% free throw shooter from my high school playing days. I would probably pay a professional to do that for me. So that's the difference between you learning how to invest and buying stocks on your own, then you're dealing with the investment bankers. You got enough professionals, man. I'm talking about these guys are not just professionals. They are all pro at what they do. So look into an IRA, mutual fund, right? Number four, seed your own business. Seed your own business. <clears throat> yeah, they was they would sleep on that. They would sleep on that. I, 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 have you guys ever seen that 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 movie? Uh, I think it's called Inside Man. About a smooth bank robbery, uh, but he comes out. He starts the the whole thing out. It says, "Pay very attention to every word that I say. I choose my words carefully, and I never repeat myself." See, I repeat myself too much on this show. I'm gonna stop repeating myself. So I'm going to stop running it back so much. But yeah, you got to catch that, man. You got to catch that. So you can put the money, seed your own business. See, some of us understand the power of having our own business for tax purposes alone. But then the tax purposes will save you money. Then you take that money and you go out and make you some money. Right? So you can seed your own. We're talking about things that your future self will thank you for if you did this with your tax money instead of buying Jordans for the new family. Right? Uh, you got a Nike outfit, a Nike hat, and Nike Jordans on your feet, and everybody in the family looks good, and y'all go out and take pictures. Nike down. Spend. $200 on family pictures and you got $2,500 worth of Nike apparel on in the picture, but you didn't think to buy a single share of Nike stock. You already know that because you Nike down like that, you're going to be putting that picture on display. That picture is going to hit the internet. Well, guess what? If you own some Nike stock and that picture hit the internet, then you absolutely could be promoting uh, your, uh, 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 the company that you own shares in. <laughs> uh, Nick Corey says that is stupid, but right. Yeah, it is. You, you already know. We finna go spend $2,500. Everybody's going to be dressed alike. We're all in a $100 Nike suit. We all got the same J's on, the retro fives, the retro twelves, whatever. And we all got Nike hats on and we're going to spend $200 on these pictures. Right? And the bucket still need an oil change. But we didn't think to buy a single share of Nike stock while we about to be Nike's best advertising. And what's funny is you put the down payment on the pictures. But then when they come back to print, you don't even have the money no more to pay for the prints. So you running around and you got the picture on uh, uh, Facebook, but it got proof across the front of it because you can't even afford now to get the doggone prints. I ain't telling you what I heard. I'm telling you what I know. Been there, done that, got the t-shirt and the hat. Silly, man. Silly. Silly. So, seed your own business, man. And, and when I say seed your own business, I'm not saying uh, talk about starting a business, buy a little piece of equipment, uh, and then spend the rest of the money. No, seed your business. Talk to somebody professional. Get you a business plan in place. Uh, 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 set up your business bank accounts. Get everything going, man. I'm talking about really seed your business. 529, number five, 529 plan for your, your kid's college. You can put the money there. Number six, start a supplement a car fund. Right? Now, we said don't go buy a car, 
but you can start a car fund where it says, you know what? I'm going to put a little bit of money. Uh, I said, don't call it all to the, yeah, man, we got to go in, man. And I, and I don't care if my embarrassing uh, 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 epithets or, or, or motivation to keep you from doing something silly, man. You guys know I'm an open book. So it is what it is, man. It is what it is, right? <laughs> it is what it is, man. And, and that's, that's part of the problem, Robert, is all of this stuff is so taboo that we keep repeating the same stuff. We, nobody talks about it, so we keep doing the same silly stuff, man. Right? So don't go buy a car, but you can take $1,000 and say, you know what? I'm going to make this car last me for another 18 months, but I'm going to put $1,000 of my tax refund money into a fund where I can't touch it. And then every month, I'm going to put $200 in there. And then next year when I get my tax refund... Uh, I will have three thousand, four thousand dollars saved. Plus, I'm gonna put something with it from the other tax refund, and now I'm gonna go buy me a nice certified used car, cash, with a warranty. Right? Don't go to the pay, uh, pay, buy here, pay here places where as soon as thirty days is up, that mug breaks down on you. No, get your nice certified pre-owned from a reputable dealer, pay cash, and you're golden, right? So start a car fund to start saving for a car. Uh, do a home improvement project. Uh, I, I don't too much agree with that one. Uh, well, in this sense, I do. It says, number seven is do a home improvement project, but number eight says, make your living space more energy efficient. So if that's the home improvement project you're doing, then that makes sense because it actually does save you money. So for instance, if you took some of the money and you upgraded all of your windows in your house and it holds the heat in and it keeps the air in, now you just reduce your monthly energy bill. And I'm all about cash flow management, man. Anything that you can do to uh, minimize your outgo, which keeps your cash flow, brings money back into your household, that makes sense, right? So you can do so. Upgrade your furnace, right? We've got a small uh, AC unit. Uh, so if I was in this situation, I would think about upgrading the AC unit because that small one causes us to have to run the air all the time just to cool the house. Whereas if I upgraded and got a bigger one, then it run more efficiently and can cool the house with less energy. So you could think about things like that because that improves your cash flow, right? Number nine, uh, buy an appliance that encourages eating at home. Huh, how about that? This ain't a frivolous thing. This is, man, if I got me a George Foreman grill, and it's easier to grab some burgers out of the freezer and throw them on the grill and they be ready in five minutes, I might cook more at home than I would stopping at McDonald's on my way because I just don't feel like it. I can teach the kids how to throw a burger on the form and grill, how to clean it up, and bam, and now we don't have to eat out as much because we're ripping and running all over town all the time, right? Maybe you buy an air fryer. Right. It's like, man, I want to go fry some chicken, but I don't want grease popping all over the place, man. I want to get my kids. Uh, they haven't had a, a home cooked meal in a while. I want to do. But you don't want to do it the traditional way. Grab you uh, air fryer or something. So do something that's going to encourage you to cook more, because, again, that's about cash flow. That's about cash flow. Again, if I do something that's going to encourage me to cook more at home, I'm going to save money by not eating out as much. Number 10, buy individual stocks, right? I'm not so much a fan of buying individual stocks uh, as I am a, a fan of investing in mutual funds and even a bigger fan of investing in your own business, uh, right? But buying individual stocks at least starts the conversation of wealth building in your home. Right. Because if you're going to buy your kid the Jordan, that's cool. Buy him the Jordan and give him a stock certificate with the Jordan. Buy him the retro sevens. 
and give them a stock certificate with the retro seven and say, look, here's what this means, son. Here are the shoes that you wanted. I promise you these shoes. You literally uh, got straight A's and I, I told you we'd get you something nice for getting straight A's. I appreciate you. But look, here's a, a, a stock certificate. Dad, what's a stock certificate? This means you own a small portion of the Nike company. So everything that anybody buys from Nike, you actually own a piece of it. And start teaching your kids ownership, right? Robert said, we bought a new wave oven, easy cooking, clean, also works on 110 instead of uh, oven 220. There you go, there you go, there you go. So that's, that, that's the thing. Now, let's talk about this debt thing. And if you come back, Around new for the midday motivation, we're going to do a presentation on how to fix your own credit. But one thing you have to understand about credit, and I know that this is going to sound a little weird for me as a financial health coach to say not to pay your debts, right? But you got to be careful with. Some of the debts that you have have gone to collections. Some of the debts that you have have been sold two and three times. Do you, I don't know if anybody ever told you this, but when you buy something, you own it, right? I, I want y'all to get this. When you buy something, you own it. So, a collections company bought your debt from your original creditor. So who owns that debt? <clears throat> I want y'all to get this and then we're going to get out of here, man. The debt collector bought your debt from your original creditor. So who owns that debt? Huh? T.I. said the one that bought it. You're absolutely right. I don't own that debt no more. You bought that debt. You own that debt. You pay that debt. So what I'm saying is, and I know some of you guys are worried about your credit score, right? And I want you to have good credit. You should be concerned about your credit score. But understand this, any of your debts in collections older than two years, paying those things off will not impact your score as much. I'm going to say this again. The debts that you have that are older than two years, unless it's an open account, if they're in collections and all that stuff, if they're older than two years, paying that stuff off does not impact your credit as much. You know what might be a better, and, and this ain't advice, I can't give you advice, I'm just, I'm just talking to myself out loud and y'all listening. It might be a better idea if you got a bunch of stuff on your credit report older than two years, the, uh, a better strategy to raise your credit score would be to not pay that stuff off. I'm not saying don't ever pay it. I'm saying challenge it first. See if they got the original contracts and you might be able to get it removed on a technicality. But what I'm saying is instead of paying the stuff off that's older than two years, go get you some new credit. Cortez, I got bad credit. How do I get new credit when my credit is bad? I need to pay this stuff off so my credit score gets up so then I can then go get some new credit. No, you don't. Take $1,000 of your tax refund money, take 500 of it into your bank, and say, I need to get a secure installment loan. And they say, oh, absolutely. We're going to take your 500. We're going to put it in a CD. Uh, and that's going to be used as collateral for the loan. Then we're going to turn around and give you that $500 back. But when we give it back to you, it's going to come with a $50 per month payment book. 
great. And you're going to report to the credit bureaus. Yes, 500 went there. Take another 500 and you go to First Premier or, or one of these uh, secure credit card companies. Now, it's going to cost you like heck, right? It's going to cost you. They got all kinds of fees. But what we're, what we're trying to do is rebuild our credit, restore our credit. So, yeah, I got to pay for it to do that. So take, you take 500 into your bank, get you an installment loan, take the other 500 and go get you a secure credit card. They're going to take the $500 and they're going to send you a credit card. And when they send you the credit card back, no, you're not going to have a $500 credit limit. You're going to have a $350 credit limit because $150 went to all those fees and stuff. So you're actually paying for a bill. But we understand that because now you got two brand new lines of credit on your credit report. That's going to boost your score faster and higher than paying off a three-year-old, four-year-old collection debt. Now, the key is make your payments on time and never use that credit card more than 30%. And now your credit is starting to rock and roll. Right? Your credit is starting to transform. Now, you want to go ahead and after you challenge all of those credits, we'll talk about this at, at our midday motivation. After you challenge everything on your credit report and they determine that those things cannot be removed, only then should you put a plan together to start taking care of and paying that stuff. But if it's older than two years, first challenge it. Because if they don't have the original contract that you signed to get you in the debt, the credit bureaus have to take that off your credit report. Challenge it first. If they come back and say, yes, it's your debt. Here's a copy of the original uh, 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 contract that you signed to get you into the debt. Okay, you say, even though it's three years old, I do eventually have to pay it. So let me send them $20 a month. And just start working on it. In fact, let, them, let me also send them a letter and say, hey, if I get back right with you, would you put, uh, report this paid as agreed? Right. If I pay this all off, will you take it off my credit report altogether or will you report it paid as agreed? Right. You got options, man. You got negotiating power because, again, whose debt is it? <laughs> it's their debt. <laughs> so you can negotiate with them. Uh, because they want you to pay for a debt that they purchased that they actually own, right? So when it comes to debt, I know it's easy to, to say, man, let me just go pay all this stuff off, man. Me, myself personally, my money is going to go into my business where it's going to make me more money and bring in more cash flow, and then I'm going to allocate some of that cash flow for debt elimination, right? So if you guys believe I gave you some good game, Rate the show, thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and hit the share button. If you have not already shared from Facebook, do me a favor. Hit the share button, man, uh, so we can continue to get this show out in front of more and more people so that we can educate our community on how money really works. Because y'all know those collectors are going to start calling like crazy. And because they're calling like crazy and because they're calling while you got the money, you're going to say, man, just so you stop calling me here, man. Not me. I'm going to go out and give me some new credit. And then I'm going to challenge that to see if I can get it removed off my credit report. If I can't, then, here, man. So, when you join the Black Wealth Movement, we give you a program called the Smart Money Kit that gives you the letters, that gives you everything that you need to start this process, right? You get all of that, man, for $35. $50 a month, man. We ain't playing, man. We trying to get our people wealthy. Not everybody, because everybody ain't about this life. But enough. We ain't trying to get everybody. Everybody ain't about this life. But if I can get a 1,000 people in my city, personally, financially successful, where I can call on these people and say, hey, man, let's do something, man. Let's all put $5,000 into the pot. What's 5,000 times 1,000? That's 5 million. Let's go buy 10 square blocks, man, and let's 
Let's transform our own city. Right? So that's the name of the game. That's what the Black Wealth Movement is all about. So really quickly, just shout out my sponsors, the Black Wealth Movement, but also uh, the Generational Wealth Building Conference in Atlanta, GA, uh, April 6th through the 8th. This is put on by the Black Billionaires Club. Uh, my man, Evan Jefferson, and his whole team. Uh, you're going to be able to learn real estate, uh, entrepreneurship, insurance, cryptocurrency, international marketing. Got something for the kids. Got something for the women. Got something for the fellows. Got something for the whole event. You can pay one price or you can get each in access to any one of these events. A la carte, three days, four different venues. It's going to be phenomenal. So if you're in the Atlanta area or you're willing to fly in, man, start making your preparations now. Go to Eventbrite and search the Generational Wealth Building Conference. Once you get there, do me the favor. Uh, uh, the cost, uh, uh, Tiasha, right now, he said he had three more tickets at $99 for the whole weekend. Once those are gone, it goes up to $149 for the whole weekend. And eventually it's going to rest at $199 for the whole weekend. So you got the whole weekend. Um, and then uh, you can also buy one of these events that you just want to attend. If you just want to attend a single event, you can also just get a ticket for a single event. I will have all of this stuff up on my website probably uh, by tomorrow. I'm waiting on a few more flyers from Evan. But in the meantime, go over to uh, Eventbrite uh, and you can get most of the details there. Uh, I don't know if he's got the individual ticket prices for the individual sessions yet, but it's coming and I'm working with him. So uh, we'll get this done today uh, or if not today, sometime early tomorrow. Uh, but please, please, since my man is shut down, make sure that you guys get out and share um, this this stuff for so that we can continue to uh, uh, promote this. I think this is a wonderfully needed event uh, and he's doing the same thing, man. He's putting together a crazy team of it's the Generational Wealth Building Conference. The Generational Wealth Building Conference. He's putting together a, a mad team of people. The same way I want a thousand people that I can work with here in St. Louis. He's doing the same thing in Atlanta. And we're going to take these models and we're going to help you do the same thing in your city. Uh, and eventually we're going to have a thousand independently wealthy but conscious brothers and sisters to work with. And so our rebuilding our community. Man, let, let, let another city go bankrupt like Detroit. And watch a man go buy it up. Why, let, let another city go bankrupt like Detroit. Gary, Indiana, for instance. Man, we got to be in position to take advantage of stuff like that, y'all. And that's what this thing is all about. That's what the Black Wealth Movement is all about. That's what the Black Billionaires Club and Club Millie is all about. Collaboration over competition. So, I'm your main man, H. Cortez, the one and only financial health mentor to the black community. Everybody's favorite fatherpreneur. Till I talk to you tomorrow, I want you to get your money up because you absolutely can do it. But more importantly, you deserve to do it, each and every one of you. Peace out, y'all.